Welcome back to Student News now to discuss uh, the warning issues or the issues of uh, Africa's uh, dwindling uh, GDP. We have uh, economist uh, Gospel Obele joining us this time around. Good evening to you, Gospel. Good evening, Jay. Thank you for coming as always. All right. Now, Africa's GDP depleted by 165 billion in 2020 amid 30 million job losses. In real terms, what is the impact of all of this on the continent's economy? It just simply means that um, the state of the economy when it comes to recovery um, doesn't seem as inclusive as the numbers may make it seem like, you know or as um, political um, call it the narratives actually make it seem like. It simply means that economic activities will not catch up enough to create um, significant employment or productive employment for default. And that's also because businesses got frustrated within um, that recovery cycle. So um, there are cost implications coming along with recovery, um, like we've never seen it before, increasing cost pressure you know, coexisting with that recovery process. So it's a lot more difficult with, I mean, especially in the face of the weakening Naira or weakening currency in the sense. So it's a lot more difficult for businesses to catch up. And until businesses can catch up or thrive at a significant level, there may not be any impact on employment as well. So we take the reverse of the case, um, which is what we saw in the GDP numbers, as well as a drastic, a sharp decline in unemployment as it were. So it was largely expected in real terms. All right, uh, there seems to be a challenge of infrastructural financing gap in the continent. How do you think um, Africa can wriggle out of this? I uh, guess the, the challenge exists, um, and to a very large extent, our revenue um, mobilization process or revenue size cannot fund the infrastructure projects. Quite honestly, I mean, infrastructure projects cost a whole lot. And the kind of infrastructure Africa needs, looking at its population as well, its population growth at almost three um, percent. We need some level of smart um, infrastructure that can take that population growth. So it's a lot of financing process, a lot of technical manpower that has to come. So uh, the goal is to think of creative ways um, in, in terms of that finance that is there. All right, you know, yeah, you may you may have issues with borrowing, but that's a critical block of um, option as it were because infrastructures are a capital project, and if properly done. All right, has high returns on investment and very productivity returns for the populace. So all of these things coming together uh, would, would boost the GDP in such a way that it, it can significantly create jobs, all right, for a critical mass of the population. So infrastructure financing is key as well, in as much as a critical chunk of your own people are involved in the process. All right, now, the AFDB president says to address the socioeconomic impact of the pandemic and support economic uh, recovery, Africa would need some 484 billion naira over the next three years and to eliminate extreme poverty by 2030. The continent will need 418 to 784 billion dollars per year. How do you think uh, the, the African continent can go about achieving this? To be very honest with you, I don't think the African continent can achieve or eliminate poverty by 2030. Um, the conversations around poverty goes beyond just financing, all right? There are key structural and um, extractive institutional elements, all right, that create the poverty trap we see today. All right, the poverty trap we see today is such that the average African, or let me use the word the average Nigeria, all right, cannot aspire to become more because he or she is trapped with the daily reality of just trying to survive. And the elements of inflation, as it were, or the pressure points of inflation on the average African or average Nigerian, to large extent, hints largely, hints largely, all right, on the basic necessities of life. All right, so think of it that this way. Is it possible to eliminate or reduce poverty when the average citizen, all right, is increasingly experiencing the rise in the cost of living on a daily basis on the core basic necessity of living. All right, so think about it very well. So if, if you have that on the table, then it tells you that there is a trap and it's like a vicious circle of poverty. That trap is being recreated by policies that come back to hurt the economy, by cultural and people ideology that comes back to hurt the economy. 
So no matter how much funds you put on the table, no matter how much your sustainable development goals conversation you, you, you talk about or you start and all that, all right, it still boils down to dealing with the structural, institutional, financing and cultural elements, all right, that have created and sort of recreated the cycle of that trap over the years. Until that trap is broken and until extracting institutions move to inclusive institutional uh, governance and, where, and, and proper leadership sustained over a period of time, we may not see any significant um, improvement in poverty um, levels, no matter the amount of money or financing made available. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.